you stop messing around. We've got stuff to do. I told you to have an early night, didn't I? Well, it's not my fault you've got a hangover, is it? Well, yeah, out with Badger and the crew, were you? I did warn you about that bramble brandy he's had brewing. Well, it certainly cleaned the lavatory pretty well. It's gleaming. Right, just go and take some paracetamol and get your pinny on. We've got shed work to do. Oh, hang on. Before you do, hit the button, will you? I am not shouting. If you're like me, you spent hours upon hours sat on the floor as a child, surrounded by remnants of Lego sets, creating usually yet another spaceship. Spaceship? And although those days have long gone, the craving is still there. Well, Flat River Games is set to deliver what can only be described as a call to childhood, as it partners with the designer, Josh Dirksen, and his game, Snap Ship Tactics, a clever, modular, customizable miniatures game for taking to the stars in outer space dogfighting. Think Lego meets Star Wars X-Wing miniatures. Snap Ship Tactics originally funded in 2022 after a successful campaign raising nearly $300,000 over on Kickstarter. But the set is coming to retail on September the 15th after backers receive their pledges. Players construct their ships from modular parts, swapping out engines, wings, weapons and more to build a fully customizable loadout for the ensuing skirmish amid asteroid fields and other interstellar hazards. Depending on the chosen parts, a ship's movement and combat capabilities can vary drastically. A lightweight fighter can easily strafe in and out of enemy range, but their firepower won't be much to write home about. Some large guns require a minimum distance, while bladed wings reward putting your ship directly into harm's way. The parts take advantage of an interlocking system designed specifically for snapship tactics, allowing hundreds of different components to swap in and out on the basic chassis for both of the main factions. The game can be played as a classic versus dogfight, cooperative strikes against enemy AI, or a solo tactical experience. Enemy units use a card system to determine their strategy when there's no human in the opposing cockpit. At $79.99 at retail, the starter box will support play for up to four players, paired up against the enemy team with a ship for everyone. Skirmishes can last between half an hour and up to two hours, but the system of movement, positioning and managing heat across several internal systems keeps things interesting but hectic. We here at the Meeple Minded don't usually try and get into politics or mention chess very often, but when the news popped up, especially in this day and age, it had all the hallmarks of people not getting with the times. An international chess federation and the regulations recently introduced by the FIDE, an international chess governing body, has banned some trans women from competing in women's chess competitions. The new regulations state trans players will be required to provide sufficient proof of gender change to comply with their national laws and regulations and due to the Federation's belief that a change in gender is a change that has a significant impact on a player's status and future eligibility to tournaments. So, if a trans woman can't provide sufficient evidence of a change, they may have their application to have their gender recognition rejected by the Federation. A publicly available document outlining the newly introduced regulations states that after FIDE and its member federations found it had often received recognition requests from members who identify as trans, it needed to address the evolving issue of trans people competing in its higher level chess competitions. On top of this, the FIDE has also placed restrictions on specifically trans women participating in its high-level chess tournaments. 
The regulation document states that in the event that the gender of a competitor was changed from male to female, the player has no right to participate in official FIDE events for women until FIDE's decision is made. FIDE has confirmed that the further analysis apparently required to make new decision on the matter could take up to two years, with no guarantee that trans women will be able to compete in women's chess tournaments. There will be no restrictions to play in the open section for a person who has changed gender. What floats our boat is reserving its restrictions purely against trans women, and the Federation has not provided any information regarding whether trans men will be banned from playing in men's chess tournaments. More so, if a trans man has acquired any chess titles in the time before they transitioned, any women's titles they had received would be abolished. On the other hand, if a trans woman held titles from any women's chess events, they will remain eligible, once again highlighting the different treatment towards players of certain gender identities. It's nice to hear though, that from the English Chess Federation, that its international director, Michael Pien, commented that the organisation he directs is opposed to these new regulations because of its discrimination, and there is no intrinsic value to being a woman or a man when it comes to playing chess. The director also confirmed that there would be no change regarding trans women's rights to play in any events hosted by the English Chess Federation. Yosha Inglesias, a transgender woman who plays chess, responded to the changes via social media in a thread that highlighted the negative effect the regulations would have trans women and girls playing chess. Inglesias commented that the new regulations will make trans chess players all over the world face a horrible dilemma, transition fully or quit chess. For trans players and especially women, it will do so much unnecessary harm. To cis players, it will bring no good whatsoever. Furthermore, Inglesias highlighted that if the FIDE wants to help women in chess, fight sexist and sexual violence, then the organisation should give women in chess more visibility and more money, rather than use trans women players as scapegoats. We contribute to the development of women in chess. We are women in chess, Inglesias concluded. Well, have you managed to bag your decks of Disney Lorcana yet? No? Well, less than a week into the public launch of the explosively popular Disney trading card game, Disney Lorcana, fans of the game have already created a free, third-party digital client called Pixelborn that allows you to play on your computer. Pixelborn technically dropped back in May of this year and is the work of a small team led by game developer Pavel Kolev. By all measures, it's the Hearthstone version of Lucana. The app, once installed on the PC, provides access to a digital collection, card back and deck customization, both ranked and direct player versus player matches, and detailed statistics if you sign up to the project's Patreon. Kolev has made moves and been careful to scrub any use of official Disney art or assets from Pixelborn's digital interface, until the player uploads images of the cards from wherever they manage to find them. The app displays greyed out duds. The play board is whimsical, bright and colourful, matching the storybook vibes of Lucana's first chapter without directly co-opting licensed illustrations or 3D models. It's a mostly empty vessel waiting for players to pour in their own Mickey Mouses, Elsas and Tinkerbells. The version available to download for free at time of writing supports all of the interactions you need to play a standalone one versus one game of Lucana. User interface elements for the inkwell and both yours and your opponent's quest total are displayed on the battlefield alongside your deck, discard pile and cards currently in play. While it lacks the polish that Blizzard Money gave to Hearthstone or Wizards of the Coast gave to Magic Arena, the layout is clean easily legible and an excellent proof of concept for what an officially supported digital app may look like. Because Lokana's gameplay doesn't bleed between opponents' turns in the same way Magic the Gathering does via instants and flashed in cards, Pixelborn doesn't have a lot of interactive weight to carry. A demo video on the client's YouTube channel shows Kolev 
playing against another player in an online match and demonstrating many of the complete and implemented animations. Cards have specific effects when played from a player's hand or inked into their well to cast more powerful cards, as does questing for the TCG's winning resource. Hovering over a card brings up a larger version with legible text and art. There's little the average player would miss in terms of accessibility and ease of use. Despite not being feature complete and a hobby project, Kolev maintains in his free time. Pixelborn has found an avid and dedicated audience amongst Lorcana's constantly growing fan base. The app recently launched its first competitive season, and there's already plenty of interaction on the competitive leaderboard. Pixelborn is currently available on PC and Mac, and mobile support is reportedly an active project. The app will allow cross-play and shared collections across devices. If you want to try it out for yourself, a link to the publicly accessible download can be found on Kolev's Twitter, or as it's known now, X's social media channel. Not standing on its laurels from winning Expert Game of the Year at this year's Spiel de Jahr, and it's already announcing the sequel and expansion to its competitive deck builder, Challengers, in Challengers 2 Beach Cup. In an Instagram post from the publisher, they say that after listening to some excellent feedback, the previous title, Challengers 2, had dropped the numerical designation in favour of something denoting its surf and sun aesthetics. Their reason? Discoverability. Given that both the Challengers, Core Box and Beach Cup can be played on their own, both serve as equally valid entry points for new players. Challengers initially released in 2022 and exemplified itself with easy-to-learn deck-building rules that pit two players against each other in tournament-style brackets. While the art style can feel a little generic at times, the whimsical factions clowns, Hollywood extras, dinosaurs and more, and clever strategies that evolve over time, have vaulted challengers high in many estimations. Before challengers grabbed the Kennerspiel de Jar, it had already picked up the As Door earlier in 2023. Challengers Beach Cup will reportedly premiere at the 2023 Essen event and give players their first taste of the Sandy expansion. Both the base box and Beach Cup can be combined and played together, allowing a whopping 18 players to take part in a mega tournament that the publisher claims only takes a little under two hours to play to completion. Seven additional decks provide new strategies and an expanded trainer roster. This opening faction is how everyone begins the game before recruiting the more eclectic volunteers from the game's marketplace. A retail release date for challenges. Beach Day is still forthcoming, but this next box will be handled by Pretzel Games, the company responsible for publishing Camel Up and Junk Art, both in their own right colourful and surprisingly deep games despite their light-hearted aesthetics. It's sure to fit into the stable of games they may have. And we're heading over to Board Game Geek, and you get it, it's this week's top five. So these games are on the list, may already be out, due to come out, or crowdfunding at the moment. It tends to be a list based on what people are searching for over on Board Game Geek right now. And on to this week's top five games, as of recording, obviously. And five. And it's Everdell. Well, those critters are back out basking in the sun we have before beginning the foraging ready for winter. And four. Is Voidfall, the Euro game that hopes to bring those big 4x space junkies to a table near you. And we ourselves actually got a game of this in over the weekend, and it was pretty good. Plenty of plastic, but still pretty good. In three. And it's Ascendancy, asymmetric houses of royal lineage, each vying for the throne. Reclaim your family name through a journey spanning multiple generations. In two. We keep mentioning it, and it's Disney Lorcana. The Disney card game hoping to break into the TCG market continues at pace. In one, it's surprisingly Castle Assault. What do you mean you've never heard of it? Well, we think the only reason it's up there is because it was said games designers who the police are looking for over the £300,000 worth of magic cards that went missing at Gen Con recently. Yep, that's the only reason it's up there. And we're heading on over to Kickstarter for some crowdfunding. And this week, we've got a game called Perch. It's for two to five players. 
takes 30 minutes to an hour to play. 14 years and over, designed by Douglas Hetrick, art by Ari Oliver, and published by Inside Up Games. The project's live until Tuesday, September the 5th. In the game, players fight for control of locations by commanding birds of their own and other players' flocks. Earn points and command woodland creatures by having the most birds on a location, pushing your foes off the perch and breaking ties to take the lead. With a modular tile configuration and a variety of woodland creatures to control, each game will present a new tactical challenge. Each round, players add their birds into a shared bag. Players then draw birds of their own, and other players take turns stacking birds on location tiles. Each location tile will award variable points for majorities, and sometimes grant players a unique ability. The game ends after five rounds, and the player that has earned the most points wins. Apart from the retail and pledge manager pledges, the game is set at 49 Canadian dollars or 29 pounds for the game and an exclusive Kickstarter backer gift. And the game itself is available in multiple languages. Brian, those pills kicked in yet? Oh well, they will. You can start by cleaning up Badger and all his other mates passed out under the desk first. Yeah, and then you can go and put all the plants back in the pots you and the crew pulled up last night. Oh, hang on. Before you wake that lot up, say goodbye to everyone, will you? And it's a goodbye from me. Keep safe, meeples. Keep those dice rolling, the cards shuffling, and we'll be right here for you next week. <laughs>